Ask any parent of a teenager. Getting their child off social media is near on impossible. Of course, being connected to the online world does have advantages, but all too often, alongside the good, lurks the bad. And for 15-year-old Tilly Rosewarn, it was very bad. The cyberbullying she endured felt merciless. Her mum and dad, Emma and Murray, tried hard to stop it, but still couldn't save their precious daughter, who suicided in February. Now, though, they want to warn others, unsuspecting parents and vulnerable teenagers, about the dangers of popular social media apps like Snapchat. And a warning, this story contains material that may be confronting for some viewers. This is how Matilda Rosewarn's parents want to remember their little girl. Just to love that little hairpiece. On stage, at her happiest, without a care in the world. Look at that smile. Mm. She was so confident on that day. So confident. But the tragic reality for her mum and dad, Emma and Murray, is that these videos are all they have left of their beautiful daughter. It's hard to see. It's very hard to see. A young life they so desperately tried to keep out of harm's way. Tilly, as she was affectionately known, felt as though she couldn't escape the relentless bullying that she endured. Because I think bullying is so insidious, how it destroys their sense of ownership of their own life and it's just, just breaks a human apart. And it broke Tilly apart. She faced harassment not only at school, but also online. It was particularly evil on Snapchat, one of the most popular instant messaging apps where a fake nude image was circulated as a cruel prank that ended up having devastating consequences. When did you learn about the Snapchat image? Um, Tilly rang me and as soon as the phone picked up, I could just hear her wailing, screaming, Mum. It was just awful. And it's a headless image, so neck sort of down to leg. Um, there's no way of identifying who it is. So this person had sent an image that wasn't of Tilly, claiming that she had sent that image of herself to him? Yeah, that's right, absolutely. And it's being spread everywhere. Um, so, and because, of course, it's so instantaneous via Snapchat, mm. she's getting one image, the next image is her, her mate going, hey, what's, what is this? And that began an afternoon of just person after person contacting her and, you know, I've got it, laughing at her. It's just awful. That was a bad night. That nude Snapchat image sent back in November 2020 was the culmination of years of bullying at school and online, which Emma and Murray felt powerless to prevent. But Tilly wasn't always a broken, bullied teenager. No, Matula was a ball of joy, really. Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, she but was she amazing. was a beautiful, a beautiful kid, an easy kid with a really um, upbeat skip. Upbeat skip, a very big giggle, and uh, very cheeky too. Raised in Bathurst in regional New South Wales, Tilly's early years were filled with mischief and laughter. One of four kids, she was surrounded by loving family. And even from a young age, she was a budding performer and joker. Today, you're a host at, at... What's your name? Annie Meyer. I could just go into her room any time and I'd probably sit in there for ages, probably mm. just laugh and be making TikToks and stuff. For Molly, 11, and Maggie, 13, Tilly was big sis the one they could always rely on to bring a smile to their face, and they adored her. It was just, like, the funnest thing, cos she'd just tell me stories and show me pictures while I was doing other things on the floor, and it'd just be like, it's like, it was really fun. When did the effects of bullying have an impact on, on Tilly? So I would say um, year five, and there'd been a birthday event that she didn't get an invitation to, and the girls were ringing and sending messages and sending images right through an evening to Tilly was distraught. That's just one thing, mm -hmm. but it builds upon the other things. But for Tilly, it was 
devastating. It was devastating and she wanted to go back to the friendship. She didn't understand why people would behave like that. Um, and sure, Tilly had fragility um, and part of her fragility was her kindness and her inability to see the negative in others. What were the first signs that Tilly was withdrawing? She didn't want to socialise, even just socialising, coming out and eating a meal with us. She just started to, the, the life became a very small sense of not being able to cope. By the time the fake nude photograph was circulated on Snapchat, Tilly was utterly distraught. Emma and Murray saw few options but to move her to another school. But that brought little reprieve as the bullying continued. Never got over it. She just couldn't face it. But the reality is she couldn't face it in the school and then because it had gone to everywhere, she couldn't, she couldn't be in the community. So she became really agoraphobic, didn't want to go anywhere. And I, I guess she just felt like the whole thing was so unjust. Tilly's despair was palpable and the impact utterly devastating. In the still of the night, Tilly did the unthinkable. And on February 16, Murray found his daughter. Tilly was just 15 years old. Two months since her death, Emma and Murray are sharing their raw grief, determined to prevent other families from going through similar trauma. I can't, I just can't imagine the heartbreak of that day, mm. Murray especially, you know. Yeah, it'll hurt forever. Our lives have changed, but we... And some days we're okay, some days we're, and, and some minutes we're okay, and then other minutes, you know, we're not okay. Um, night times are really hard. She couldn't see a life worth living in no. the end. Because what life was there when people feel like that you can just abort someone's sense of self? And it begins with what you write and what you say. For most of us, theirs is an unimaginable grief. What makes it worse is that Emma and Murray tried everything to save their little girl, but everywhere they turned, they hit a roadblock. When the Snapchat image was circulated, like many parents, their instinct was to report the malicious and explicit post first to the school, then to the police. But they were told there was nothing either could do, that it was a matter for the social media giant. But they have a responsibility, don't they? I absolutely say that they have a responsibility and they have a duty of care to the people who are using their platform. But Tilly's isn't an isolated incident. And as you'll see, this kind of online harassment is happening to teenagers far too often. The next day at school, someone said, oh, hey, did you send a photo to this person? I went, how do you know about that? It's been a long and tough seven weeks for Emma and Murray. In February, their little girl Tilly Rosewarn suicided. She was just 15. The same giggle she had when she was two is what she had oh, when she nice, was isn't it? 15. Her death came after years of relentless bullying at school and on social media. But her parents are determined to remember the best parts of their daughter's life. And here along the riverbank in Bathurst is where they shared so many happy memories. What did Tilly love about this place? She loved the water, she liked the animals. I think she just felt, and, and the, the sense of fun that could come from... Anything here. Anything here, really, that's true. Emma and Murray tried everything they could to save Tilly. And now their grief is mixed with a deep sense of anger at those who should have better protected her from bullying. Is there anything that could have saved Tilly? Well, there's so many things that could have saved Tilly. And part of it is a lack of power for schools, a lack of power for police to investigate these kind of things. Um, knowledge even from the uh, police that were investigating the Snapchat that the e-safety commissioner was someone who could assist and be directed the right way. Mm. Um, kids taking responsibility for what they write. Did Tilly fall through the cracks? I, I think it's undeniable that she did. Um, and I think we need to resolve to find a way to make sure that no other child falls through the cracks in this way. 
As the e-safety commissioner, Julie Inman Grant runs a specialised department aimed at preventing online harm, a place people can turn to when they're being harassed on social media. But the reality is Tilly's family didn't even know there was an e-safety commissioner. And by the time Julie learned of Tilly's story, it was too late. If her parents had come to you, if they were made aware that you even existed, what could you have done? We would have responded to her report within three hours. We likely would have been able to get down that content and content that was considered image-based abuse. Even back then? Because that was two years ago. Oh yeah, back then. Yeah, we, we've, we've had a, we've, the scheme has been in place for, for seven years. Um, if we thought that content needed to come down expeditiously because the child was in distress, um, we've done that in as little as 12 minutes before. That makes it even more heartbreaking. You had the power two years ago to take down an image within 12 minutes and you didn't even know that this had happened. Tilly's family didn't even know they could come to you. I mean, that highlights and amplifies a failing in this system. Well, we don't have tentacles that go into people's homes, um, nor are we proactively monitoring the internet. We run a complaints-based system, um, so no, we, we cannot help people that do not report abuse to us. And no one is more devastated than I am that we didn't know about this case while it was happening because I truly believe we could have helped this child. For too long, the social media giants have gotten away with an unchecked power able to reach millions of people without consequence. They made a, d a deliberate decision to do the bare minimum to keep their high profits, and that's why we want to hold them accountable in a court of law. US lawyer Matthew Bergman has met many parents whose children's lives were tragically cut short, and he's planning to sue Snapchat and other online apps on their behalf. He believes social media is an addiction, that sadly, children are drawn into. What we understand is the way the dopamine response works in the brain is the same dopamine response if someone takes a bump of cocaine. And children don't have the capacity to control that. Do parents actually know how long their kids are spending on social media or, or even what they're doing on social media? They don't know. And, and uh, you know, and, and kids are on, the, on social media all hours of the day or night. The, the, the fact is that, you, you know, the internet is here to stay. So, you know, this is not a question of taking phones away from kids. That's just not practical. What is practical uh, is to have these platforms safe. Some of them, like Snapchat in particular, uh, with the disappearing messages, is explicitly designed to thwart parental authority, to, to, you know, and, and kids will be kids. After that, I sent that Snapchat, it was what, the next day when I found out it had been shared. A disappearing message is exactly what Libby Payne thought she was sharing online when she was 13, while chatting on Snapchat to a boy she knew and trusted. We kind of got around to talking about nude photos and he said, oh, you know, like, I want to see your body and I can't save it, I can't screenshot it. Um, and I liked him and I kind of felt really worn down after hours of chatting and I just went, oh, OK, I'll... I'll just send it, like, whatever, he can't, you know, he's told me that he won't send it on and I trusted this person because I liked them. And the next day at school, someone said, oh, hey, did you send a photo to this person? And I went, how do you know about that? Libby was shamed for sending a very private image that was then publicly circulated. It was an awful humiliation for a 13-year-old. I was victim blamed by a lot of my friends, teachers. I was anxious, depressed, even like suicidal for the year or so after. You'd think 13 year olds wouldn't be able to send explicit images on social media platforms in the first place. Snapchat, with its 319 million users worldwide, boasts stringent security protocols. Yet, as you've just seen, it's clear they're not working. We asked them for an interview, but they refused. Instead, in a statement saying, we use advanced technologies to proactively detect sexual content involving minors, which is both prohibited by our policies and illegal. In the nine years since she had her own Snapchat horror, Libby Payne says little has changed to improve the safety of children on social media. And that's now become her mission to advocate for better online education for those most vulnerable. 
I, I would love to see them step up. I've had conversations with Instagram and Facebook and they mm -hmm. promise us co-designed reporting platforms and then there's no follow through, which is really disappointing. But the most important thing is that we have primary prevention and that is making sure that we talk to and educate young people before incidents happen. I want every child in Australia to know that we've got their back and that they have some place to go. Julie Inman Grant says a broad approach is needed and hopes more people today know there is help available. I don't want any child to think that the only way out is by taking their life. It's this kind of support that Tilly Rose Warren's younger sisters, Maggie and Molly, believe could have made a difference. What has hit me the most is that I have to go grow up and go through life without Matilda. And I don't want to do that. I just don't want to, I don't want to grow up without her. I just like wish that the last goodbye that I got was something a bit more meaningful than like what I always say, but I just didn't get it. But I understand like no one really gets a final goodbye this. It's for Tilly's sake, they say, that they push through. And the family hopes her story can help prevent another tragic loss. But she did leave. Her last message in her phone was that she loved us and knew we loved her. Her last written words on this planet were about love. And we loved her. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.